let's turn our attention now to Kellogg and um, food labeling. I think it's not a new thing. You know, I think food labeling has been under the spotlight for quite some time now. So when the, when the legislation does get passed and comes into effect, what does it actually then mean for food, food labeling? You're absolutely right. I think that the legislation that was passed last year is probably more applicable in this sense, and that really governs things like country of origin labeling, size of lettering, um, you know, con contact details of manufacturers, those sorts of things. Um, the Consumer Protection Act is more in, in the area of promotional competitions. So if a company such as Kellogg were to run a promotional competition on PAC, there, is, there are a whole host of um, requirements that need to be met. Um, give us a, give us a few sure. terms and conditions. Um, absolutely, okay. the terms and conditions. We spoke earlier about mm -hmm. the language needing to be plain and yeah. understandable. Yeah. Are terms and conditions plain and understandable for the consumer? That's a big question. Another thing is that the consumer needs to know how to enter into the competition. Mm -hmm. They need to know the closing date. Mm -hmm. um, they need to know how the winner will be drawn if it's a draw or a lot, a lottery. Um, right. They need to know how the winners will be contacted. Okay. All of those sorts of pieces so of information. There's more competition. That's right. The labelling has been done. But let's, let's look at it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a few things that I um, picked up because, you know, it is all about for consumers to make more informed yes. um, decisions when it yes. comes to food. Um, labels cannot indicate any health claims. Why is that? Why can't we say it's wholesome, it's nutri nutritious, it's this, it's mm -hmm. that? Why is that? Sue? Well, putting my dietetics hat on now, it's it's a case of is one food more wholesome or more nutritious than another? And oh, the answer okay. is no. All foods can fit as part of a healthy, balanced diet. So that is, again, a consumer protection mechanism to make sure that people aren't making claims that are misleading or false. Would, would you like to comment on this, Iona, as a consumer and as a lawyer, really? Yes, I, I mean, I, I suppose as a consumer, you know, I want to know that what I'm buying and what it promises is actually what it's going to be delivered. Delivered, yeah. Um, so from a consumer, it, it, it is a good thing. And I, I mean, various a number of consumers, I think we sit, we sit here to most of us as l literate, being able to read, being able to understand exactly what's on the package and, and, and you're able to decide whether or not one product is better than the other. Right. But I think we, we need to constantly just step back and just you know bear in mind that there are various people in South Africa who are not able to, 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 re, to read are not or, literate or educated. Exactly, are not right. able to take in information yeah. as easily as, as, as most of us do. Um, and I understand the frustrations around the CPA and all the, the obligations, uh, but I think it just when you step back a little bit, it, it just helps to understand where, where I guess government is, is, is coming from. And I must say, again, sorry, uh, one of the things that I think will be, will be good from this and one of the things that I think is, the government is trying to achieve is, is a culture of consumerism, having consumers mm. who know exactly what they want. Yeah. And, and speaking as a competition lawyer, I want to have competitors that, that, that sell good products, that compete on product and on price. So, yeah. And I think uh, indirectly this will achieve that because consumers will know that they should produce products that are that are of good quality mm. they must compete because otherwise i will know that there's a supplier who can provide me with with a product at a, at a better quality and, and at a better price, price. but com competition is good right fred yeah it's good but uh, i just want to comment on the issue of um the labeling part where you've got an ingredient bar yeah there you'll find that some pro products uh, ingredients are foreign to us d despite the fact that we are in it and all the stuff and we don't know what those sodium whatever carbohydrates means yeah what so is, yeah. i think that this act comes into effect whereby co consumers should know what is in those small boxes because yeah. i think one of the issues or cha cha challenges that we faced as the asa is that you get complaints from consumers who said that i wanted a hundred percent juice as per the labeling mm -hmm. but what i'm getting is a 10 percent of flavored mm -hmm. juice mm -hmm. and we'll find that to the department of agriculture because the 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 responses that we get from mama marketers is that this complies with the agricultural re re regulations that do with a pro product mm -hmm. and the department of agriculture will often come say that co complies with our regulations but now mm -hmm. the provisions of the consumer protection mm -hmm. act says Whichever legislation that provides more pro protection mm. to consumers will pre prevail, mm. meaning yeah. that the uh, regulations that belong to the Department of Agriculture will be in danger because mm. pe people will want to buy what has been advertised. Mm. But then, I mean, that, that's quite a job, isn't it? Because you can't literally put everything 
on the packaging. No. So mm -hmm. how do you actually go about it? Look, I think, I think you would have to take decisions internally as to what's going to make the most sense to the consumer within the realm of protecting the consumer, of course. Mm. Um, and especially small packages are a real issue. Can you imagine a chewing gum um, packet trying Rapper. to fit all of this information mm. onto impossible. it? It's just impossible. Impossible. Mm. Yeah. And then you could also not say reduced, low fat, because how many times have we bought something that says fat free, all of us ladies yes. always on a diet, <laughs> and do you actually know that it's fat free? Is there mm. such a thing as completely 100% fat free? Mm. Well, again, there are regulations, the labeling yeah. regulations would cover those thresholds and it would be for fibre claims, for fat claims, for sugar claims, all those sorts of things. So they're covered elsewhere. Mm. Yeah. Iona, do you think you're going to get consumers that are going to really ride this train, this gravy train, and take advantage? I, I certainly think so. I think, I think, I mean, you know, speaking to, to some of our clients who, who just tell us exactly what, what they go through, through during, you know, at every g g given time where a consumer will use up a product and when there's just this much left, they're ah. actually saddened. This is not what I bought. Then and they complain. Is, then they complain. So I, say, I, I suppose as a business and a supplier, you're going to have to make, you know, a legal decision and also a PR, you are running a company, so that you're probably are more inclined to just replace certain products because you wouldn't want um, your to be on the front page of, of any newspaper right. or magazine. Uh, so I think that will be more of a, a, a supplier will react to that from a PR perspective and from a legal perspective. So it's going to be a bit of a trying time, isn't it, Fred? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I think the pro problem that we, we, we will face, and I hope that it doesn't happen, is where you find consumers taking advantage about the time freeze that has been provided for in the act where you find that you have five days within which mm. to to return the goods like mm. i mean if you buy a tv and you want to watch a certain game you watch it over weekend and you take, take, it, take it back or you want to drive a car to cape town and come back and all that stuff so i think there should be a mechanism whereby that should, should be stopped i don't know how that is going to be done but i think it, it will be a shame for South Africans yeah. to use it in mm. that way because I think that what the government is doing is trying to put something good for, mm. for, for yes. the baby. Well, let's try and remember what the act is for and let's not take advantage. Thank you to all the guests for joining us on Media and Money today.